Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Police say an Ann Arbor state rep was super drunk behind the wheel. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the drunkest you've ever been, zero being sober, what would you say you are? But police not buying that because of what happened right before she got pulled over. And breaking developments in the coronavirus outbreak. We're following good news here at home while fears overseas send the markets into a tailspin. But we begin with live pictures from Washington that you've been watching as we await the vote over witnesses at the impeachment trial of the president. We're told this could happen at any moment as we've seen key senators meeting on the floor during this break that's preempted our newscast here. Right, all day House managers and the White House defense team have worked to make their case for and against hearing from witnesses at the trial. But we've steadily seen key votes put their names in the no column now, a move that could quickly bring an end to this trial. Alice Barr following all the breaking developments from Washington. Good evening. The trial appeared to shift to the fast track overnight as Republicans secured the votes they need to block witness testimony. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. Even before a pivotal vote on whether to call witnesses in the impeachment trial of President Trump, the outcome seemed certain. A cluster of key Republicans coming out to say they'll vote no, while still acknowledging the president's actions were inappropriate. Senator Lisa Murkowski saying in this partisan impeachment, there will be no fair trial and continuing the process won't change anything. Even as their quest for more evidence appeared headed for a dead end, House managers made an 11th hour appeal. Let the American people know that you understand they deserve the truth. Republicans securing enough votes to move toward the final stage to acquit the president. At the same time, more explosive allegations emerged from the upcoming book by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. The New York Times reporting Bolton alleges President Trump tried to draw him into a pressure campaign to get Ukraine to investigate the Bidens starting last May. Well, what this does is it moves up the timetable on Trump's involvement. In May, there was a meeting in the Oval Office in which Trump Trump said to Bolton, call Zelensky and make sure that he'll meet with Giuliani. The White House in a statement saying that meeting never happened. But the revelations clearly energized Democrats for one last push, getting their story on the record with the American people, though their chances for success in the Senate appear dim. Senator Murkowski sided with her fellow Republicans, but said as an institution, Congress has failed. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Allison, of course, all of this is happening as we speak. As soon as a vote begins, if it begins, we'll bring it to you live both here on air and on clickondetroit.com. There are several major developments tonight involving the coronavirus. Yeah, the Washtenaw County Health Department says its pending test results have come back negative. That means none of the four possible cases from Michigan actually had the virus. Today, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell pressed social media companies to do more to help stop the spread of misinformation about the coronavirus. And the CDC announced a federal quarantine order for evacuated Americans. Wendy Wolfolk has more on the day's developments. <laughs> As the number of people infected with the coronavirus rapidly approaches 10,000 worldwide, the U.S. takes an aggressive step to slow the outbreak. Beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday, February the 2nd, the United States government will implement temporary measures to increase our abilities to detect and contain the, the coronavirus proactively and aggressively. Measures that will include a mandatory 14-day quarantine for any American citizen who has traveled from China's Wuhan province, the epicenter of the outbreak. Those who have traveled from mainland China will undergo monitoring and self-quarantine for two weeks, but that's only for U.S. citizens. Foreign nationals, other than immediate family of U.S. citizens and permanent residents who have traveled in China within the last 14 days, will be denied entry into the United States. Government health officials say while the outbreak risk in the U.S. is low, these steps are necessary. But I want to emphasize that the risk to the American public currently is low. Our goal is to do all we can do to keep it that way. 
According to the CDC, of the more than 240 people tested in 36 states, only six confirmed cases, more than 120 still pending. This is not something that's being transmitted from person to person, place to place. This is not something you're seeing at the grocery store, at the movie theater, or at uh, ball games or anything like that. This was close contact within the same household. Public health officials advise the flu virus is a bigger threat to this country than the coronavirus. So washing hands and covering a cough, the best way to prevent getting sick. Wendy Wolfolk, Local 4. In a conference call this afternoon, the CDC said they understand that these new measures may be drastic, but they would rather be remembered for overreacting than underreacting in the face of this virus. The ongoing coronavirus crisis sent the stock market plummeting today with the Dow finishing down 610 points. Today's loss wiped out the gains for January and was also the worst day for the market since August. Auburn Hills police say state rep Rebecca Warren was super drunk behind the wheel last month and now they've released the dash cam video of that arrest. Take a look and you can see the car Warren was driving hit a guardrail on I-75. That's when you see the cruiser's lights come on, and then shortly after that, you see the Ann Arbor representative fail multiple field sobriety tests. Let's get to Larry Sproul. He's live tonight. Larry, uh, she was northbound on I-75 trying to get to Ann Arbor. Well, Kimberly, and that's what she told police. He said she was leaving a holiday Christmas party from Detroit going back home to Ann Arbor. Actually, this is surveillance video of Warren driving on 75 northbound just moments after she crashed into a guardrail and she did not stop there. The date, December 26, 2019. The time, 1124 p.m. Police say this is State Rep Rebecca Warren driving this car swerving in and out of lanes, even cutting off this driver, forcing them to slam on brakes. It's here where police say state representative Rebecca Warren crashed into a guardrail around 11.25 p.m. Radio 36, they got that vehicle to hit But as you can see, Warren kept going, ignoring police sirens and lights. Warren did not stop until 11.27 p.m., roughly two minutes later. South of Joslin Road, on the right hand shoulder. What's your name? Rebecca? Are you, are you the owner of the vehicle? I am. Okay. Just sit on my bumper for me, okay? During the questioning period, Warren had some questions of her own. These are all my, these are all my partners. Start just like that. Three, four, five, six, seven. But when the officer asked her to take a breathalyzer test, she refused. You're under arrest for operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, okay? Friday, my photographer Joel and I stopped by the address on file for the representative, but no one answered the door. And as you can see, that is Warren right there still being questioned by police in this video. She is charged with a DUI, and they said that she had a blood alcohol content of 0.17 or more. That is a super drunk charge. We're live tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry, thanks. All right, the weekend is upon us. We're going to forget all these gray skies. Let's take a look outside. Oh, wait, there's still gray skies. <laughs> well, huh. can't shake it. <laughs> We've seen a lot. We've seen some rain, some snow today. Yeah, let's get over to Ben and see uh, what the weekend holds for us. Tracking a little bit more snow on the horizon, right? You got that right, Kim, as we get into Saturday. But really, that push that we saw about noon today, that may be some of the most intense stuff that we get uh, here in the next 24 to 36 hours. And even this did not give us any accumulation. But yes, we still have cloudy skies and we'll continue. But this is what we're expecting over the weekend. Uh, next to nothing, a couple tenths of an inch at best on Saturday and dry conditions on Sunday. Temperatures through the evening relatively steady, falling just below 32 as we get towards midnight tonight with an isolated flurry. But we've got better chances of snow coming in the seven day forecast. We'll check that in some incredibly warm temperatures before in just a few minutes, guys. OK, Ben. Today, the United Auto Workers announced a move to clean house in hopes of putting the corruption scandal behind it. The move aims to boot eight officials convicted in the scandal out of the union. Let's bring in business editor Rod Maloney. He's live tonight. And uh, Rod, we've talked about these Article 31 charges before. 
Yeah, we've seen that with the former president in his right hand, Gary Jones and Vance Pearson. Now, we're at the Southfield Temporary UAW Executive Offices. They held a special conference call here this morning of an executive board meeting where they started those Article 31 proceedings. We'll start with the UAW leadership and staffers who were in prison. Former Chrysler UAW Vice President Norwood Jewell serving his roughly year-long sentence in a Wisconsin medium security prison. Nancy A. Johnson, Jewell's right hand, is in a Kentucky federal lockup, should be out next month. Those two, along with Verdell King, were the first three caught up in the UAW corruption scandal. King has served her time. They were convicted in the bill padding and golf outing scandal. Then there are the more recent names, Joe Ashton, former GM board member and General Motors UAW vice president, along with his right-hand men, Jeffrey Paterzik and Michael Grimes. They're all in the process of pleading guilty to taking bribes from a vendor making custom UAW watches and other trash and trinkets. There are two other lesser-known names, Keith Mickens and Edward Nick Robinson. This list is the group the UAW board today started the wheels in motion to remove from the union. All of them are out of any active union membership. The move at this point merely makes it so none of them can take part in any UAW retiree activities. But more than that, though, this signals that the union wants to wipe corrupt names from the union so that the federal government doesn't come in and put the union in receivership. Now, technically, the process is there's a trial where they can try and decide whether they should keep these members in the union as retirees. Uh, but you could do what Jones and Pearson have done, which is resign from the union to avoid a trial. So far, nobody's done that, but the expectation is that most of these people will probably take that option. Reporting live in Southfield, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Okay, Rod. Well, there's much more to come here on a Friday. Here's Sean Lang. River Rouge absolutely rocked by a triple shooting that is a double homicide. What we're learning about the victims, what we're learning about the information that police need right now. All right, Sean, and we've discovered one major incentive to being a census taker this year. Seriously, we'll tell you what it is. And here's Hank. Jason, a major update in the toxic ooze investigation. Is the water here in Madison Heights safe to drink? We have the important numbers for you coming up live right after the break. Okay, Hank, and before we go to break, let's take a live look at the Senate floor right now where we are awaiting a vote over witnesses at the impeachment trial of President Trump. Senators have taken a little break as key senators huddle there talking about what comes next. It appears Republicans have secured the votes to block witnesses. NBC News says they are meeting now to discuss trial scheduling. We will continue to follow this and bring you any new updates on air and online. Click on Detroit.com. We'll be right back.